Perhaps you've heard of an international organization called the Red Hat Society. Founded in 1998 for women over the age of 50, it's based on the poem Warning by Jenny Joseph, which starts with the line, When I'm an old woman, I shall wear purple, with a red hat which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. The poem's theme is that we shouldn't let what others think of us influence who we are. But we do, especially in our younger years. That's the underlying premise of the looking glass self, sometimes described as an image of us in the eyes of others. And if you aren't familiar with the old-fashioned term looking glass, just substitute mirror. Sociologist Charles Horton Cooley proposed the theory of the looking glass self in 1902. The theory is important to our understanding of how the self-concept develops, which you'll recall is the collection of beliefs that you have about yourself. To better understand the theory, we'll start with the basics, including Cooley's three principal elements. Then we will connect the looking glass self to the concept of symbolic interactionism, and ending with a discussion of the possible impacts related to the looking glass self. The basic concept is that we see ourselves the way others see us like a mirror reflecting others' views of ourselves back to us. But it's just a little more complicated than that. The theory suggests that we view ourselves as a result of how we think others view us. This clarification is important for two reasons. First, because it means that our self-image is influenced by others only if we accept those perceived views. And second, what we see reflected back to us in the looking glass may not be reality. It only shows how we think the other person perceives us. These looking glasses, plural because you may get a different view from different people, are probably not accurate, potentially even as bad as those crazy funhouse mirrors you might see at a carnival. Let me add a third thing to consider. There are really multiple looking glasses. Again, a funhouse usually has more than one distorted mirror. Wikipedia uses an image to show that different people reflect different images back to us, like your mom considering you an angel, while your ex-girlfriend thinks of you as a devil. Cooley's original work addresses three principal elements. How you imagine you appear to the other person, how you imagine that the other person judges you, and how you feel about that other person's perceived judgment, pride, happiness, guilt, shame, Notice that all three of these elements, sometimes called steps, involve you. You are actively involved in the process, and based on this, you play an active role in the influence of how others perceive you, judge you, and ultimately feel about you. And I can see this as circular in nature. We imagine how the other person perceives us, behave to either support or adjust that perception, and then imagine again how the other person perceives us. You can see a connection between Cooley's theory and symbolic interaction theory, which the American Psychological Association defines as a theory that assumes that self-concept is created through interpretation of symbolic gestures, words, actions, and appearances exhibited by others during social interaction, meaning we make sense of our world and ourselves as a result of interacting with others. In other words, we learn about ourselves and society using and exchanging symbols, words, images, nonverbal movements, etc., anything that stands for something else, with others, like our family, our peers, our schools, and mass and social media, using symbols while interacting, symbolic interaction. And of course, we interact with multiple individuals. Our family members may reflect back to us that we are likable, intelligent, funny, responsible, or unlikable, irresponsible, etc. And different family members may project different images. And you have friends, acquaintances, even the barista at your local coffee bar, all using symbols in your interactions with them. Symbols that can be misinterpreted. Realize that each individual interaction doesn't necessarily impact your view of yourself. It's when you get the message often, frequency, you think the other person is truthful, credibility, and or it fits with other messages you've been exposed to, consistency, that it can become part of your view of who you are. That takes us to the potential impacts of the looking glass self. 
Again, what we think we see may not be reality. If you haven't figured it out yet, everyone's opinion is not equally important to us. Your perception of your mom's view of you may carry greater weight in your view of yourself than how you think your ex views you. Secondly, we interact with all kinds of people, even fictional individuals. You don't have to talk to someone to interact with them, or even know them personally. Interaction means that we communicate with or react to someone else. And you should know by now that communication is not limited to talking or even only with people we know. When you follow someone on Twitter or Instagram, you are interacting with them, or at least with who you think they are. Your purchase of movie or concert tickets is a form of interaction as well. And I'm pretty sure you are aware that the images others project may not be reality. You often engage in social comparison because you compare yourself to these others and, as per Cooley, imagine how you appear to them and how they would judge you. And to add the third element, how you feel about their perceived judgment. Keep in mind that you often only see what others want you to see. The flawless complexion, thanks to airbrushing or Snapchat filters, a perfect body, Again, thanks to Photoshop, personal trainers, personal chefs, cosmetic surgery, etc., or an enviable lifestyle, which may be carefully chosen positive pieces of their lives. We tend to post successes, things we can be proud of, rather than failures or even mundane parts of our lives. The Urban Dictionary even has a word for it, postworthy. I don't, for example, post a picture of my bathroom scale when I'm disappointed with what I see, well, actually, I don't post much anyway, so what I do tends to be positive or neutral or maybe even a little amusing. You should now have a better understanding of Cooley's looking glass self theory and the related concept of symbolic interactionism and how we think others' perceived judgments of us could impact us, especially when we are young. It's possible that just having an awareness of the theory can limit the impacts of it. Back to Jenny Joseph's warning poem, where the last lines remind us that we can be who we are at any age. But maybe I ought to practice a little now, so people who know me are not too shocked or surprised when suddenly I am old and start to wear purple. I have a purple suit and a red hat. Maybe I should start wearing them more.